looking up 50s rouge makeup and this is what came up. I'm not trying to go around the office looking like Stephen King's It. My parents are pretty traditional. Like I'd have my legs sprawled out on the couch and my mom would be like, sit properly, you're a girl. <laughs> the politeness is a strong gene in my family. Be modest, not that we're overly conservative dressers, but that is kind of our style. My mom cared about manners. My sister and I both took a tillion. If I got a grade in that class, I would have gotten an F. Politeness and being thoughtful and kind is timeless. I actually heard about this complete book of etiquette um, from the 1950s and I decided to order it, read it, and see what wisdom I could soak up. But I don't see how things like that and posture and mannerisms and the other things will make a girl more popular. There's a lot of really weird stuff in here. There are pages on how to sit in a chair. Please tell me I don't have to wear rouge all over my face because... <laughs> You're gonna have to wear rouge oh, all over shoot. your face. <laughs> I actually did my makeup really well today. No. <laughs> yeah, I'm kind of excited to see what's in store. So we're going to be following 1950s etiquette rules for the day. These grooming habits form the basis of a good appearance. Good grooming will pay dividends to each and every one of you. It will make you more confident and at ease in any situation. Now for the girdle portion. Here it is. And then you hook these things. It's squeezing into this thing and it didn't fit at all. Like this is the size of my thigh. It just wouldn't go through. This is a freaking death trap. So here I am at work in a girdle. It was taco day, so this is a struggle. Um, I feel like it's squishing my organs. It looks like there's a spine on my stomach. Especially with like the thin materials everyone wears these days you would see all the metal in the front of the dress. So far, so good. It's not that tight. I can still breathe. I feel like this is just gonna moderate my um, eating. The girdle's really riding up my ass as well. When after I took it off, I still felt like my stomach was hurting and I couldn't catch my breath for a little while. The fact that we wear Spanx all the time or the fact that we wear heels, like all of those things kind of hurt when we do them, so I'm glad girdles aren't as much a thing. Nothing dates you as much as rouge that shows. Okay, time to use the rouge, which is just your basic blush. Amy Vanderbilt, who wrote the book, she basically is like Kim Kardashian with rouge. Let's go for it. You should have applied your eyelid toward the temples on the vertical planes of the nose bridge, chin, and earlobes. So you're basically contouring with rouge. Everyone looks lovely, they're just, they're so pink. Pretty pink. I think I went overboard already. <laughs> I'm not good at this. I followed what she said, but this is bad. This is the pinkest my face will ever be, but I'm kind of digging it. Like it's it's adorable. I definitely failed with with the uh, rouge. Maybe I do like it. I would have never put red up here. It only looks bad. Walking like a lady. No. Can you tell anything different with my makeup? No. no. <laughs> Wait, do I not look like a clown? No. no. <laughs> From top to toe, they feel better and look better. Stocking daily or twice daily. I get to wear tights all day. <laughs> wear these all the time in the winter. In the 1950s, they had to wear these at all times. In the 1950s, women's legs had to be perfect all the time, and I think they solved that by wearing stockings. Oh my god, these are my legs tan. My legs do look better, but I've never put on a pair of stockings or pantyhose that I haven't immediately ruined, so we'll see how long they last. At work, in the tights, it's pretty standard. I think that's one of the things on this list that's most relevant to today. And I wasn't wearing stockings, which was because I was already wearing leggings on a daily basis because, I mean, they're more comfortable, duh. I also wonder if in the 1950s, if you wear stockings, you don't have to shave your legs. I can see that, I get that. But I guess my legs are good. And of course, there are so many wrong ways of sitting down that I couldn't begin to show you all of them. So, a lady never crosses her legs. Well, I never knew lacrossing legs was masculine. I really forgot I'm not supposed to be sitting crisscross. So unladylike. The back of your leg should actually come in contact with the chair. Gently into the chair, maintaining it careful. I'm exhausted, never mind. <laughs> it's kind of like parallel parking, but for your butt. The couch is a tricky beast, not because there's a dog on it, but because it's very comfortable. So when you sit on it, it can be bad. Don't relax. I'm the kind of person who prefers to lean back and like have my food here, which I know is kind of gross. This might be a good thing to remember in company with other people. And then there's this business of eating. 
Elbows on the table are permissible um, between courses, but not when one while one is eating, so I need to get these elbows off. So I'm gonna sit down and eat my food, and that's a process. And sit at the edge. I'm gonna eat my food. My mom was saying the elbows were absolutely never allowed on the table for them. You can put them back on the table in the middle of pockets of when everyone's not eating, which I think is interesting. I always eat with my elbows off the table anyway, so it wasn't that big a deal. Eating the orange in the way that you would eat a grapefruit was interesting. It was kind of hard. Um, also a little bit time consuming to cut it all up in the morning. Um, but yeah. And I never ate chicken or anything messy, so that was all good. Corn on the cob. They, did they have these in the 1950s? Because these are great. And you never butter the whole ear at once which is something I definitely do. And I think everyone in this world does that, but. Buttering one fucking, cause I'm a lady in the 1950s, okay. Was that really ladylike? Was that really something that you imagine a 1950s proper etiquette woman doing? No, she just wouldn't eat corn. But I gotta eat corn, I love corn. I'll call that poise or charm, if you will. It will make you more attractive to the people around you. Experiencing 1950s etiquette really just shows me how far women have come. I feel like all of these etiquette rules should really just be suggestions. They wanted women to portray themselves in a very elegant manner, like look beautiful, but at the same time don't seem too eager to talk to men. But nowadays it's kind of the exact opposite. Women are trying to be more expressive and be themselves. I asked my mom about etiquette things that her mother tended to do and she said that she wore lipstick all the time, even in pajamas. All the kids had to be at the door waiting for my grandfather to come home from work. Closing your legs, sit at the edge of your seat, just so you don't seem like, I don't know, promiscuous or like a little too out there. Whereas politeness is universal and everyone should try to be polite and that's something that should be passed down throughout the generations. And I think I'll be happy in 50 years when more formality things have disappeared. When it comes to treating others, we still treat them with the same respect and kindness. In fact, more respect to express themselves now than they did back in that time. Rouging your face and wearing pantyhose 24 seven or eating an orange the way you would eat a grapefruit not the end of the world if we don't hang on to it for the next 50 years. Being conscious of how you make other people feel is probably the most important etiquette, manners that I hope to hold on to. If there was one rule from the 1950s that we should still follow today, it's to always moisturize. Because nobody likes ashy hands. Especially the boys. <laughs>